So we've got a new toy to talk about. This is the brand new Countycom GP7 slash SSB. This is a uh, an FM stereo, uh, long wave, uh, AM broadcast, short wave, and single sideband slash CW receiver that uh, fits in the palm of your hand. Now long time viewers might say, well I've seen that before. So, well you're probably remembering this guy. This is the predecessor. This is the GP5 SSB. And I did a review on this and also another video of how to use the memories uh, about six years ago. So it's actually been that long. So this is now the long-awaited uh, upgrade to the GP5, the new GP7. And there's a half a dozen or more improvements, a couple of which are pretty significant. So in this video, we'll take a look at some of the major improvements and upgrades to the GP7 and then uh, do a little bit of a demonstration of some of these uh, new features. So stay tuned. Now one of the more obvious differences, other than the color, is the addition of the numeric keypad. And this allows for a direct frequency entry for the signal that you want to listen to. Makes it very, very handy to quickly tune where you want to go. The GP7 also adds variable bandpass filters. Depending on the mode you're in, you may have as many as four or five different bandpass filter selections, which can greatly enhance your readability under crowded band conditions or noisy band conditions. The antennas on both these units are stainless steel. Uh, the one on the GP7 is a little bit longer for enhanced reception. The scanning features on the GP7 are almost twice as fast as they were on the GP5. There is a synchronous AM detection mode, which can help under certain circumstances to give you a clearer AM reception, particularly on the shortwave bands. The enhanced tuning mode functionality has been greatly improved over the GP5. We'll talk about that shortly. GP7 is noticeably lighter than the uh, predecessor GP5 and part of that is due to the fact that the GP5 used you know, three AAA batteries where the new GP7 uses a rechargeable lithium-ion battery pack which is a lot lighter. Now of course some people might say well I like the convenience of having uh, the AAA batteries because I can get them anywhere and I kind of agree with that as well. But in order to make room for all these enhancements and the speaker moving down, they had to move to a smaller, lower profile battery. But you get uh, the same or even better capacity out of these uh, lithium ion batteries. And Countycom also sells a extended runtime kit, which includes a charger and a second battery. So you could be charging one while you're using one. And one of the only other minor differences, uh, other than the power connector over here, is that the volume control, instead of being a rotary potentiometer, is now an encoder, so it tunes uh, the volume in steps. Uh, that's partly because this uh, volume control is also used to select certain uh, menu functions, like selecting the receiver bandwidth, for example. The radio does come with a USB cable, so you can charge the lithium-ion battery right through this port. Uh, there is a battery management system built in to properly manage the charge of that lithium-ion battery. And the radio also comes with a long wave and AM broadcast uh, high sensitivity antenna that plugs in the top. So bottom line, a lot of really nice enhancements over the GP5 uh, in this uh, kind of AM, long wave, short wave, single sideband, ham radio, and FM, ra FM broadcast receiver that's available for just under $100 from Countycom. Let's go ahead and play with some of its features. Sensitivity is actually quite good, even with just the telescoping antenna on shortwave. Here we're looking at uh, 7490 shortwave, picking up a pretty decent station here oh, at about uh, 4.35 o'clock in the afternoon here on the East Coast. The controls used to select which band you want to listen to are very similar to the GP5. The medium wave, long wave button will cycle between the medium wave or AM broadcast band and the long wave band which sits below that. The FM broadcast band is selected by the button next to that. The left and right hours are used to cycle through the 14 HF short wave bands. And of course they're indicated by their approximate wavelength. There's the 90 meter band and then the 75 meter band, 60 meter band, etc. So that will cycle through all 14 of those as a starting point. If you happen to select single sideband with the SSB button down here, now these particular uh, buttons will cycle through the 11 uh, supported HF 
amateur radio bands. Once you select your band of interest, there are really three ways that you can tune. You can simply just rotate the uh, tuning knob up or down to change frequencies. And this is where there's actually a variable step size which can be really handy. So in the case of uh, single sideband operation, if we select the step size button right here, notice the little carrot that moves. It's right now above the 5. If I hit it again, see how it flashes? With it flashing, that's going to tune in 5 kilohertz steps. If I hit it again, now that carrot's moved down to the 10 hertz position. So now I can tune in just 10 hertz steps. And this is really handy for fine tuning in a single sideband or CW station. Hit it one more time and it goes back to the kilohertz position here, but will tune in 1 kilohertz steps. Now, of course, in addition to the manual tuning operation, you can have it automatically scanned through the band. Uh, we're, in this case, we're in kind of VFO mode. So by hitting the VFO or VF key and holding it down, it will then start scanning. And as it comes across a station that is uh, kind of a, is stronger, it will actually pause there for five seconds and you can hit any key to stop it or just let it keep going. Now, of course, if there's a particular frequency you want to listen to, let's say, for example, I want to listen to the Maritime Mobile Service Net on 20 meters. That's at uh, 14300. So we can just dial that in. And in this case, I want to switch it to upper sideband. And now I'd be ready to listen to the Maritime Mobile Service Net. Or if I want to listen to WBCQ on 7490, I can hit the SSB key to take me out of single sideband mode. In this case, let's dial in, say, 7490, and now I'm ready to listen to 7490 AM WBCQ. Now, two of the more useful features from an amateur radio standpoint are that variable step size that allows me to fine-tune single sideband and CW signals, and the available multiple receiver bandwidths that allow me to zero in on particular signals in crowded band conditions. Let's listen in to some CW on the 40 meter band here to see what we're talking about here. So we can hear a number of different stations, each one at their own frequency, at their own different pitch. And if you hear how finely we can adjust those. This allows you to select the particular frequency you want to hear get right at the side tone pitch that you like. Now of course this is with the bandwidth opened up to 4 kilohertz so I can hear all these different stations. Uh, we can actually knock that bandwidth down selecting the, uh, the bandwidth key here and the narrowest bandwidth we can select is just 500 hertz. Now notice now that uh, I hear a lot less noise and uh, just that station that is centered within that 500 hertz bandwidth is the one that I'm hearing. So notice again as we open it up, you'll hear how you start hearing additional stations. And then we go back down to 500 hertz. I always find it interesting to visually see what the bandpass filter is doing. So I've got the audio output of the radio wired into the scope, and the scope showing me the frequency response, or FFT, from DC out to 5 kilohertz, so about 500 hertz per step. So right now we're looking at uh, essentially the shape of the filter at the 4 kilohertz, the widest position. So we click the filter button here. I can rotate the volume knob and rotate through the various filter shapes. So we start at 4 kilohertz, we knock it down to 3, and knock it down to 2.2, then 1.2, and then 0 0.5, or 500 hertz. Now what I found is that the, uh, the 500 hertz wide filter is not centered exactly where you might want it for uh, CW listening. Most people are, use a side tone of about 7 or 800 hertz, if I move my cursor out here to say about 700, we're kind of at the top end of the filter. It's still within the passband, so it'll work, but there's a lot, it's not really centered on it. 
So the, the filter looks like it's centered somewhere between, say, 300 and 800 hertz or so. So the center of the filter is about 550. You could also cycle through the filters just by hitting the filter button repeatedly. So there's the 500 hertz, then 1.2, 2.2, uh, 3, and then 4. You don't have an IF shift where you can slide that filter back and forth, but uh, the nice thing, especially in a radio of this class, just having those uh, variable filters available to you is really, really useful. So as you can see, those filters are pretty effective on single sideband as well. Yeah, as we can see from the manual, if you're in the long wave or AM broadcast band, the available bandwidths are 2.5, 3.5, and 9 kilohertz. In short wave, 2.5, 3.5, and 5. And then if you're in the single sideband or and CW mode, you've got some additional narrow filters, 500 kilo or 500 hertz, 1.2 kilohertz, to 2.2 kilohertz and then uh, 3 and 4 kilohertz wide. Now there are two different types of memories in this radio. Kind of your ordinary station memories. We can switch to the memory mode by hitting the VF, VM. So VF stands for variable frequency. VF is to vary the memory. So I click on that. Notice how the, the frequency indicator flashed. That means I'm in the VF mode. If I hit it again, notice how the preset flashes. Now I'm in the memory mode. So now if I use the tuning uh, knob, I'm tuning through the various presets that are in memory. Those presets that are in memory can be entered a couple of different ways. One is just storing signals manually where I tune to a station. Okay, I want to put that in memory. I hit the memory key, rotate the, to the memory channel I want to put it into, hit the memory key again, and that's done. Another way to enter uh, signals into the preset memory is to use this ATS function, which stands for Auto Tuning Storage. And what this will do is uh, when you hit the left or the right arrow key, it'll cycle through and as it finds stations, will automatically put them in memory for you. Now when operating in uh, broadcast or FM, those just work uh, as you'd expect. However, in shortwave, uh, these buttons work a little bit differently. There's two different modes for the automatic tuning storage. So mode A, if you will, when you're in shortwave, is by hitting this uh, left pointing arrow. And what that will do is uh, automatically scan through all of the 14 shortwave HF bands and st store everyone that it finds into memory, replacing any memory that you already had set up. Mode B is if we hit the right pointing arrow, if I hit the right pointing arrow, it's going to scan within whatever band I'm selected and only within that band, and it's going to add signals to whatever memory I have. So it won't overwrite any memory, it'll just add more stations to that memory. So those ordinary preset memories are useful for if you're operating always from the same place and things like that. You might have some favorite stations that you want to listen to. But to me, one of the more interesting memory modes is the ETM, or Enhanced Tuning Mode. And these are more kind of semi-temporary memories that are very useful to help you tune around just to hear what's out there or if you're in a different location. Uh, and, and using the radio, it really helps you to go and find stations to listen to. Now the way ETM works, if we uh, hit the ETM button here, we go into ETM mode, we see the ETM indicator here, and uh, if I just push and hold the ETM button, you'll notice it started scanning from the 120 meter band and it's working its way all the way up. It will scan through all 14 uh, HF shortwave, shortwave bands, again storing into memory every station that it finds just like it did for what you'd do for the automatic tuning storage. Now what I found is the ETM is actually a lot faster on this radio than it was on the GP5. It takes about two minutes, a little over two minutes, to scan the entire you know, 2 to 30 megahertz frequency range and will store all those frequencies in memory. But what's really interesting is that when you do ETM, it will store all the signals that it finds into one of 24 ETM memory banks. And those, those 24 memory banks are based on the 24 hours of a day. Because as you know, with shortwave radio, the propagation will vary uh, during the day. Uh, and you know, certain bands will be better at some times during the day, and other bands will be better at other times during the day. 
So we, there's a separate ETM memory bank for each, so for from 0, 100 to 1 to 100, and then from 100 to 200, 200 to 300, all the way up to 23 to 2400. So you can actually set up and run ETM uh, at different times of the day and have different memory banks that are kind of tailored to that particular time of the day to listen to stations that where the propagation is favorable during that time of the day. And the ETM memories, because they get written within two minutes or so, uh, very, very handy to just repeat that when you're ready to go. And then once the, the, the band is finished scanning, you can then just go through and, and scroll through in ETM mode and just scroll through and find those signals that are out there rather than just blindly tuning trying to find stations that are out there. So we, we can see we're, uh, we found 21 stations so far. We're now up to the 13 meter band. It's just scrolling through that right now. And again, after a little over two minutes, it'll finish uh, with all of the bands that it has. So it's on the last one now, the, uh, the 11 meter band. It's just about done tuning. And once it's done, it'll stop. So it found 22 stations that it's now put into this ETM uh, memory bank. And I can, so this is as E02, because right now we're at hour 0200 uh, UTC. That's what I've got this set to. So now I can actually scroll through and we can listen to each of those stations that it found. So now it's only selecting those frequencies where it actually heard something. Uh, so again, really handy if you're playing with the radio and just want to find something to listen to. Just use that ETM mode to find those stations. So the rig comes with a really nice 30-page uh, manual, very easy to understand. It comes with uh, the uh, USB cable to uh, charge the radio up. This is that uh, ferrite bar antenna that you can plug in the, in the top for enhanced sensitivity on the uh, long wave and medium wave bands. Even though there is a small ferrite bar inside, this will give you even more sensitivity. Also comes with a, a set of earplugs and a, a little kind of leatherette case that you can stick it in. There are some nice optional things that are available from Countycom as well. This is the uh, the kit for uh, kind of extended listening. comes with a battery and the charger, so you can be charging a battery while you're uh, uh, using the radio. There's also some nice uh, kind of silicone rubber cases. This is the kind of just black uh, case that kind of fits over there. And then the uh, Never Lose Your Radio Neon Green. I think there's also another, like an orange or a red or something that's available as well. So again, great little radio. I uh, really just kind of touched the surface of it a little bit here with this short review, but certainly worth checking out if you're into uh, portable operating or just like keeping up with uh, shortwave or even your AM or FM listening or even some ham radio listening out on the go. A great little radio. Thanks again for listening. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you had not subscribed already, please consider doing so. And thanks again as always for watching.